Hello all. Welcome to this session. In this session, I am going to answer software testing interview question 1 to 12. That is, what will happen if a defect is found in production? Let me answer. So what as software testers we have to do if we come across or find a defect in production? So let's get started. First of all, before I give an answer for this question that what uh, software testers have to do if they find a defect or bug in the production, first let's understand what is mean by production. Production is nothing but live environment, okay? Production is nothing but a live environment. So that end users can access, okay? This uh, production in simple words is nothing but a live environment, which is nothing but the end users can access the application because of the production, okay? Because of the live environment only, end users can access the application. What does it mean? Clearly means, you see, the developers will be developing the code related to the application. So uh, before, before this particular application is released into the market, that particular developed, developed code of the application will reside in the pre-production environment, okay? So once the software gets released into the market, how the software gets released into the market, the, uh, the developer developed application code will be deployed onto a production environment, okay? From the pre-production environments, it will be moved into the production environments, which is nothing but the live environment. Once this uh, application code developed by developers move to the live environment, the end users can access the application, okay? So once the code is deployed to this live environment, that is production environment, the end users can access the application. That is what is called as production phase, okay? So production. So in such kind of cases, while the end users are using the application, which is deployed onto the live environment, that is production environment, if a bug or defect is found in that production environment, okay, and uh, the end users, real customers are able to see the defect. You see how serious it is, right? So what we have to do as software testers, okay? If such kind of situation we came across, so before releasing the software into the market, as software testers, we have to find all the defects in the software, okay? But due to some XYZ reasons, after the software gets released into the market, after the application developed code developed by the developers and tested by the testers is uh, deployed onto the live environment like production environment where the end users are actually using the application for their purposes. If the defect comes across, then what will be the situation of the software testers? right it looks like serious there right so but the thing here is due to some xyz reasons it happened okay it's not intentional so we should not panic guys okay the first thing we have to do take care of is we should not panic okay don't panic instead be calm okay so in that kind of situation this happens guys this happens for a lot of people okay so during their career right uh, they have to work on multiple projects in one of the projects this may happen where one bug will be missed, okay? During the testing, you are unable to find the bug, but that is that bug occurs in the production. Though it is serious, we should not panic, okay? So uh, if you keep on panic, right, you cannot do anything else, okay? In that situations, right, you will be, um, you, you cannot control your fear and, you know, right, things will go even more wrong, okay? So instead of doing that, let's not panic, okay? So let's face the situation instead of being panic. So let's make ourselves calm. Okay, as software testers, we should become more calm than, okay, instead of becoming panic. Okay, so next thing is, so in that panic, what will happen if you don't control the panic and if you don't be calm, what happens is you will start the blame game automatically, right? So anyone, how people will in, encounter the fear? So once they get the fear and uh, they get panic and simply say that, okay, I'm not the one, I am not the one, that person, this person, okay? This is because of him, this is because of her. Like that, you keep on blaming, blaming others out of the panic. So if you don't panic and if you're calm, then you will not play the blame game, okay? So that what, that's what happens. That's why I'm saying we should not panic and uh, we should be calm instead and we should not play the blame game and putting the uh, the problem, okay? Who caused the problem on the name of others, okay? That's not a good thing. Let's not play the blame game, okay? Or don't start the blame game. Be calm, don't panic. This is very important. Now, so if you're calm and if you're not playing the blame game, and you are not in a position of panic, okay? You have controlled your panic thing or whatever the fears and all by being calm and uh, you're not starting any blame game and all. In that situations, what are the steps you have to follow? I'm going to show you, okay? The different steps that you have to follow to tackle this problem, okay? By being calm. Thing is, first we have to understand the bug, okay? So which bug, okay? Which bug is in the production? We have to understand it in and out, okay? So that's what is the first step as software testers we have to do. 
then we have to check whether the buggy is reproducing in production environment okay is it really coming or not okay so someone is saying that the buggy is there in the production okay due to some customer has um, reported that problem or whatever it is so that information you first understand it okay what the what the bug they are actually speaking about just first, first try to understand and then try to reproduce the same bug okay because they are simply stating but is it really there in the production or not we as software testers have to find it out okay so we have to check whether the bug is reproducing the production environment or not we have to check okay that is the second thing so once we confirm that the bug is uh, once we understand the bug and once we confirm that the bug is reproducing in the production environment then if the bug is really reproducing okay once we confirm that the bug is re reproducing then we have to report the defect right then we have to report the defect okay so we have to report the defect even though it is in a production environment we have to report the defects in our uh, defect tracking tools or uh, test management tools like jira or whatever that you are using at your workplace okay you have to report the defect okay that is that has come in the production environment there and now next thing is investigation okay so some crime happened let's go into the real world guys if a crime happens what the police will do they will do the investigation right how did it happen okay what are the situations that has driven to this kind of crime or whatever they will start investigating similarly if a bug is found in the production okay after you confirm that it is reproducing really coming in the production and after you report the defect you have to identify okay so you have to identify how it is missed okay before identifying how, how it is missed guys after you report the defect i missed one step here you have to inform the stakeholders okay stakeholders means what nothing but okay other people in the team that's it okay it can be a project manager or anyone who is working on the project that you have to okay so those people will say as a stakeholders we say them as stakeholders okay the required okay the required people that we have to showcase this problem to okay once you report the defect and once you uh, confirm that uh, the bug is reproducing the production and after you understand you have to inform the stakeholders about this defect okay the people who don't know about this bug in the production right you have to inform them okay so all the people who are working the project right whoever has this particular communication has to be communicated to regarding the bug in the production those you can call them as stakeholders now okay all those other people who need to be communicated stakeholders other people in the project are stakeholders okay so about this particular bug in the production you have to inform them then you have to identify how it is missed okay so parallelly you can identify how it is missed okay so what what caused this uh, what caused the software testers to skip uh, to uh, miss this particular defect okay before the software gets released into the market that investigation we have to do okay so verify we have to go through all the test cases that we have executed and see like uh, is because of the ineffective test cases or something we have to identify the root cause guys okay what is the actual problem why the bug has been missed by software testers or the test case related to this bug is not there or maybe the bug is only coming in special conditions we don't know okay or any other uh, setting changes happened because of which the bug has come whatever the case is guys okay so why that defect or bug has uh, been missed before releasing the software into the market or be before the uh, application became live and uh, accessible to the end users that we have to identify okay we have to find out verify the test cases verify the things and all and come to a conclusion okay why the defect has been mixed missed now finally after all the steps the important step is we have to get the defect fixed right so the defect is there in the production and we don't know like what impact it is doing on the application while the end users are using the application okay so the the thing that only solution that is left uh, with the software testers is to get this particular defect uh, or bug fixed by the developers how how means for that guys uh, the software testers uh, have to first perform root cause analysis along with the developers okay software testers uh, along with the help of the developers have to perform root cause analysis why the defect has what is the root cause of the defect okay because of which reason the defect is coming they have to find and also not only that guys uh, the software testers have to identify the risks involved okay if the if this particular defect is not fixed uh, what is the possible risk and what are the impact areas of the bug okay what are the impact areas of the bug they have to identify okay the risk and uh, uh, impact areas of the bug because of uh, the bug in the production what are the consequences we have to identify okay apart from performing the root cause analysis why the defect has been defect actually occurred okay that is what is root what is the reason behind the root uh, defect okay that is the root cause analysis after that what will happen if the defect is not fixed and uh, what are the areas that are going to be impacted are we going to lose this business or whatever it is we have to identify that okay then 
based on this uh, root cause analysis and uh, identified risks and impact areas, right? Then we have to plan for uh, getting this particular defect fixed by the developers. Okay, the software testers have to work on getting this particular defect fixed by developers, and that too based on the priority and severity of the defect, guys. Okay, because not all defects in the production are serious. Some defects are serious. Some defects are minor. You can ignore also. Okay, so you should not be very serious if a minor defect comes in the production. You should not be uh, like uh, taking a very okay big action there. Okay. So all our work, okay, getting these defects fixed or whatever should be, all these activities should be based on priority and CVT of the defects, okay? So let's say, guys, let's say, take an example where you got a very minor defect and because uh, you thought that that minor defect also should not be there in the production, that is not causing that much business impact to the users, okay? It can be ignored and can be fixed later, okay? Even though that minor defect is there, it's not causing much problem. In that cases, if you still try to fix that minor defect, what will happen? Because here the application is live. If the developer touches the code, what will happen? The side effects may come in the other other working areas of the application, and more more uh, big or uh, more serious defects may come in the application. Okay, that too in the live. That's the problem, guys. So we have to take our decisions very carefully here. Based on the priority and severity of the defects only, we have to uh, we have to take a decision of whether to get this particular uh, defect fixed by developers or not. We have to make a decision. Okay. So, and also, if this particular defect that is there in the production, if it has to be really fixed by the developers, we have to make sure that uh, there is less impact to the end users, okay? The end users should not uh, face any heat because of our fixing of the defect. All these decisions we have to take, guys, okay? So after uh, after fixing the defect and after rolling out the code changes because of the defect fixing onto the production environment, okay? So because of that defect fix, things should not go wrong. Okay, so we have to make sure that, okay, we, we have to make sure that there is less impact to the end users, okay? The, it should not affect our bug fixes or code changes should not affect the end users, okay, while using the application. With that note, guys, I'll show you some different types of uh, things that developers will do, okay, to fix the defect uh, when a particular defect defects comes in production, right? Developers may do any of these three things, okay? They may, they may, do, uh, they may fix the defect in the form of a patch, or they may fix the defect uh, in the production environment with the maybe in the form of a hot fix or they may fix the defect in the production environment in the form of a cold fix okay it can be any anything coming to the patch case okay what is patch means you just understand the difference between patch when the developers will go for a patch patch fix when, when the developers will go for a hard fix of the defect when the developers will go for a uh, cold fix of the defect in the production okay you have to depending on different circumstances they will take a decision patch means Whenever they feel that uh, this particular fix has to be done in a temporary way, just for no purpose, okay, not, not for long term, maybe after uh, in the next iteration or next release, right, they'll plan a better fix. But for now, they want to uh, temporarily fix it, okay, just to overcome the problem, they will do some small fix, okay. So these bugs, which doesn't need immediate attention, okay, when this kind of situation will be coming, when the developers will go for a patch that is a temporary fix, when the bugs which don't need immediate attention, okay? When the bugs are coming in the production which doesn't need immediate attention, they can be ignored for now and can be um, rectified later, okay? In such kind of cases, so you can do a temporary fix, okay? Developers can do a temporary fix, temporary fix. And uh, here, schedule fixes to avoid the system downtime, okay? So a proper schedule, guys. So okay? it's not be done. This fixes will be done on live, okay? So, but uh, the thing is. Uh, there will be some timeline, okay? At this point of time, I'll schedule. Maybe in the night uh, when users doesn't use that, I'll fix it, okay? Schedule fixes to avoid the system downtime because if these fixes are done uh, during the, when the end users are using the application, there is a possibility that because of these bugs fixes or uh, because of this patch thing or whatever the temporary fix, uh, the, the application may go down, okay? So when patches are like schedule fixes, guys, uh, to avoid the system downtime, okay? Their schedule means time time to time, okay? So at a fixed time, they will be uh, scheduled, okay? So the fixes will happen. And second one is a hard fix, guys, okay? Hard fix is a, like immediate urgent fix, okay? So the severity and priority, it's a showstopper or whatever it is, okay? It's a very important effect and uh, we have to fix it ASAP, okay? Otherwise, we'll get a lot of problem from the end users, okay? Our company will lose a lot of reputation. Such kind of situation occurs, then hard fix will happen where immediate life fixes, guys, okay? Immediately, developers will do the fix there itself and uh, here, without zero or minimum downtime. And uh, while doing this immediate fix, right, urgent fix, right, developers will make sure that there is zero or minimum downtime of the application, okay? So they will try their level best that uh, application system may not go down, okay? Should not go down, they'll try their level best. If in rare cases, right, uh, they will make sure that uh, system will be up in uh, 
just minutes or something okay so minimum downtime they have to do the fix okay and that to the fix will happen on the live live environment okay while the application is live while the end users are using only the fixing will happen okay so co cold fix cold fix coming to the cold fix guys uh, here I have to take the system down to fix okay so here here in the case of hard fix the system is not gone down but in the case of cold fix the system will go down guys okay how in order to fix this the system has to be restarted or whatever it is okay the hardware has to be restarted or system has to be restarted otherwise the fix will not happen it is also a live fix guys okay it is also a live fix while the end users are using the application only will take the system down and fix the problem fix the defect okay fix the defect that is coming in the production during the live only when the end users are using and uh, for this uh, fixing right in the cold fix as part of cold fix the system has to go down it's a planned fix guys okay it's a planned fix uh, it's not an urgent fix but it is a planned fix where users will be informed in advance okay about the downtime so you know users will be informed that uh, at so and so time uh, we are uh, doing some maintenance of the application and uh, the system may not be accessible for you for one or two hours like that they'll put an email to all the end users and then they'll do the fixing okay Th this kind of things we generally get right while using different applications in in day to day life okay same thing the the the, the purpose is cold fix guys okay so these are the different ways in which okay different type uh, for fixes in which the developers will fix the defect based on the priority and cvr of the defect defect and based on the situations okay so fine so hope guys you understood what will happen if a defect is found in the production this is what happens okay this is what happens guys as i explained in this mind map these are the different things that you will come across okay so the environment will be like this okay at the time when the defect is found in the production right things will be a bit uh, harsh but uh, still we should be very cool and uh, we should follow the things that we have to follow so that we can rectify the defect and uh, go in the direction of patches hot fixes and cold fixes okay despite of the pressure we should be calm and uh, we should not play any blame game and uh, we should be able to uh, identify the things and then get this particular defect fixed properly okay so so hope guys you got the answer for this question uh, in the next session i'm going to answer another software testing interview question for you till then see you bye bye